previous grantees, um, it's really important that the information that we're putting in the system as you guys are enrolling people in your programs, that we make sure that the system is actually, that you're actually seeing your numbers grow in the system. When you're adding credentials, it's important that we make sure that information is um, transferring between the IWDS system and the Illinois WorkNet system. So what we wanted everyone to do, and we talked about this last week, um, and so if you guys could get this done today, because we, um, we talked about it last week as well, but the grantee detail page, and that's what Natasha's on right now. Um, each of you have one. So um, if you click on that, so it's right where we put in all the information for your training program. Oh, yeah, sorry. She's going to show you how to get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just, as you're talking, I was just say, you know, this will be your provider info, or you'll we'll see this little icon, and then you hit to the grantee details. And then there's some areas that you can edit and other areas that commerce will need to put in the information, but you can edit this information that's available. And then it also includes your training program information and that you have in there as well, far, as well as your work site. So it's a really nice place where you can go and just get like a quick overview of, you know, what you have in the system right now. And I'm actually, after this call, going to update everybody's um, left side of their page for the grant detail page. So that will be done today. Um, so we need you to update your address, the program name, um, the start and end date, and then I believe the last one is like your scope of work on there. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Yep, scope of work overview, and then um, if you have an LWEA partner that you partner with on the grant, we need to know that as well. Another thing, if everyone could send me an email and let me know who is administering your TABE test for all your clients. Actually, could you do it this way? Because, I mean, just to start out, because like in here, you have case notes, and you can add a case note of, say, a TABE administrator and put the information in here, and you can send it as a message to Tara. Perfect. You'll be able to send it there. Yeah, I say that now. I'm on test. I don't know why it's not on the chat. Oh, wait a minute, it's because I said the wrong thing. No wonder. There you go. You can send it to Tara in your case note, and then it'll stay in the case notes. So Perfect. To go someplace else to look for it. Yeah, just let us know. And, it does, and if you guys are using, I know some agencies are using the CASA, that's fine. We just need to know who's administering that test for you. I did send an email out last week to everyone to let them know that prior to you certifying anyone in the system, those clients have to have a tape test or, or uh, let me just say an assessment on file. Um, so please make sure you guys are following that, that those guidelines regarding that. But send us something short and sweet, you know. Agency A is conducting our tape test for our clients. Um, and then if you do not know who's doing your tape test, that's something we really have to figure out immediately. Um, because like I said, that is a part of the eligibility process. Does anyone have any questions about that or about the grant detail page that we need updated today? Okay, um, I do wanna point out when you're talking about the scope of work overview, that is basically about your program. It could be short and sweet. You know, we're going to enroll 45 youth into a um, certified, you know, um, production assistant program. It's over uh, the course of a 16 week, you know, whatever the case may be. But let us know. This page is honestly for anybody. If we're going to any manager's meeting or anything like that, we want to be able to print this page out and give it to anyone. Say I'm out and, and you know, just someone else has to take over for a second. We wanna be able to make sure we're talking about your program, that we're having the most accurate information. So we wanna make sure this page is updated for that. Okay, if anybody doesn't have, oh, let me check the chat box, sorry. Okay, so nobody has any questions. It's nothing in the chat box. And we're good to go on that. Okay. okay. And then if you could show them the Julio report really quickly. Okay. So I'm going to So this is where we get all of our numbers. So when you tell us that you have six people in your program, um, or you have done, or you've entered, you know, um, credentials for your clients, we print this 
page out for our management team. And so it's really important that we stay on top of this in the beginning to make sure this information is first transferring over correctly. So if you notice you're putting information in IWDS and it is not syncing, which it should do every night to Illinois WorkNet, that's something that you please let us know immediately. Um, so that way we can look and see what's going on with the system. We can only fix things that we know about. So please, like I said, let us know if there's any um, issues that you guys are running across regarding the system. So you go to reports right now, I think it's called the Julio report. And then uh, if you have access to multiple locations, which I don't think is the case for this one, then you'll, you can select those providers. And then, um, you know, we have your projected number of people that you're going to serve. And that comes from your training program area. Same with your target audience pathways. You can see the number, this is test of course. So you can see the number of youth enrolled in services. Um, you can see what that is. Then you can also see the recognized credentials. And just to talk about that, we are currently having an issue with um, previous grantees. When you put in information in IWDS and say it's for a high school diploma, if you put in high school diploma the way it is on the screen right now, you have to put that, you have to put in the title of the credential the same for every single client. If you put h.s.diploma, it's going to come up as another credential. So it's very important that whoever is putting in your information in IWDS is being consistent with what they're labeling all the credentials um, with. So like I said, for GED, just make sure, however you're labeling it, do it the same for all your clients so that it comes over into the system correctly. If for whatever reason you see that you're entering credentials in and they're not, please email us immediately so we can kind of figure out what's going on. Um, we shouldn't see anything in there that says like other, um, what else did we see? Other or NA, those should not even be in the system for credentials. It should only be what you guys are offering and what, um, and also only enter credentials that people are obtaining through your agency. Okay, and then make sure you're spelling stuff correctly like credential is spelled wrong on forklift driver credential. And also make sure you're putting the actual names that are on any permits, certificates, something like that. Don't put forklift driver if it's called a power industrial something, something or another. Um, make sure we're putting the actual names that are listed on the documents that you're uploading um, for each client. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. And then you'll be able to see the different types of work experience uh, types underneath there as well. <clears throat> and those are controlled by when you enter in, um, you know, the different work experiences. I actually, I need to double check that. This might be services. I'll double check that. I need to have an info bubble here. Um, if you click on any of these links, then you'll see the customers that are associated with that number. So anyway, this is just a really quick uh, tool that you can use to get an overview of what Tara and the other uh, uh, management and commerce management will be looking at. So you just need to make sure that these numbers are accurate so they have the right information. Okay, so one of the things going back, uh, just because this came up, I just want to set, you know, put it out there as a reminder, is that um, you do want to make sure that your information is accurate in the system, okay? And so, like, one of the things that Tara had mentioned was the credentials. When you go to your credentials, uh, you know, either you can add them from the credential registry or if you're just adding them yourself, again, make sure that whatever um, you, yeah, what'd you say, the, instead of just like forklift driver? Um, yeah, putting the actual titles. 
yeah, so yeah, put the actual though. title here. And, you know, so then I'm going to also work with Cody so that, you know, if they start coming in um, slightly different, that we can um, have like a sync or, you know, to an update so you can, you know, attach it to a standardized name, but still that, uh, you know, even if we do that in WorkNet, it's not necessarily going to help IWDS. So if you could make sure you put it in the IWDS correctly to help them with report pulling information out of that system as well. Okay. One of the things I want to point out, um, I know this goes back to early basics, but I do want to part out, point out that we do have the partner guide that has articles. We have the archived, you know, uh, training videos and so forth. We have the full list of resources. And so with the full list of resources, we'll have, you know, like guidance so you can see an article um, it has, you know, the basic overview and then all the related resources and then a related video. So I want to make sure everybody does know about those. So that would be under the guidance area. We have a whole section for the instructions on how to do things in Illinois WorkNet. We try to break it out into, you know, chunks, intake process, services, reports, getting started, and then the same thing with more resources. So any of the resources that we use in the um, presentations, we, you know, we want to make sure that we're including those in this area. Also, we have an area for updates. And so, you know, we've been trying to be, you know, keep, keep up with um, making sure that updates are added to this page as well. So we will have more updates in the future, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so you can get to the partner pathway from this guide. You can also get to the guide or to the partner. I'm sorry. You can also get to the tools through the customer support center right here. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you that we added just recently is if you go to Illinois WorkNet, instead of having either remembering the short URL or having to go all the way down to the bottom, we added a new icon up here at the top. So you can just flip over to the partner side and then, you know, here's your partner guide. If you want to go back, you just flip it and you can go back. So, okay, so that's, those are the resources that are out on the website. So let's go ahead and go in, no, it's production. Let me go ahead and go to the group. Now, um, the, as most of you already know, that the individuals <clears throat> will complete an online application. The application is available with my full list of resources. We have the public page right here. It's also available off the Illinois WorkNet homepage. Um, that gives an overview of the program. They can learn about the program. They can uh, give them a little bit more information. They can learn about the training programs. The training program information that you enter is displayed on this page. They can apply for the program. We have the apply now button. We also have uh, just an overview PowerPoint because some groups like to have their group of youth do the application all at one time. And so what they'll do is they'll take this PowerPoint and put it up on the screen. And instead of having to go through and uh, an actual uh, application and, you know, keep, keep going through that process, these are the screenshots to help walk 
the youth through the application or the intake form. And then we have next steps, which will tell them what to expect after submitting the form and then some additional resources. So the youth will complete the on, online intake form. Once they're into the system, they'll populate your customer list and you'll see an overview form. So overview. So you can take a look at the intake form. This is the application or intake form that they submit. You can see if it's complete. The intake review goes through suitability, eligibility, and then syncing with IWDS. And so you can see what the status is for each of those. We have an area for the integrated resource team. So you can identify who's part of this team. Does it have some other things? So you can easily add those contacts and then remove them. You can schedule an appointment for them to meet with the LWEA staff for the um, completing the um, IWDS certified application. Then we also have the information overview for the career plan so you can see what they have already in their career plan or if there's action that needs to be taken. Same with worksite placement and outcomes. Every 30 days, um, you'll be prompted to review the customer's information to make sure it's current and make sure it's accurate. Um, we do say you know, that the 30-day review um, should have case notes. So um, you, know, you wanna make sure you're entering those case notes. And Tara, is it a requirement that the case note is added as an episode in the case management system? you know, with case management and IWDS, or is it okay to have the case note just be in Illinois WorkNet? And that, because the case notes also populate IWDS. Tara, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh, we must have lost Tara's voice. Audio. Okay. Well, uh -huh. oh, on so for the thirty-day review, I don't know if this uh -huh. is something we need to double check with uh, with Jim. I know that they have to have case notes every thirty days as a minimum. Uh -huh. Does do any of those case notes have to be entered in as an episode with case management, or can they just be entered in anywhere in the system as a case note? Do they have to be entered as an episode in case management, or what was the second part? Or can they just be entered in as a case note? Because all my work net populates IWDS case notes. Yes. Yeah. And that's good enough. So they don't have to do the episode. No. The, uh, just This is Tammy, a comment on that. When they do the episode, it does extend the, the end date of like case management. So if they don't do an episode in IWDS, then it doesn't extend the end date. So it's it's uh, probably not a bad idea to to if you continue to do case management to do it and um, add an episode in IWDS and a case note there, and then that changes that that because otherwise if you're looking at IWDS it looks like you know it could be a long period of time where there's no services you know active. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is anybody confused by that? Please let us know now so we can make sure. Okay. So I, I would recommend if you're still doing case management with them, if it's, it'd be same day services is the only thing that's a new episode. So if it's case management, you do a same, you add an episode under case management and IWDS and case note it. Okay. Thank you. So once you check that this is done and submit, then that box will go away. Uh, just to kind of give you an overview of how these pages are set up. The left hand side, you'll see the profile with ha has a lot of information in it. Um, you can expand it out, but we did know, you know, it's a lot of information. So it gave you the basics up at the top with the ability to easily see all of it. 
If you, you, you'll be able to see when the last time this was synced with IWDS. And um, if you make an update, it, it syncs with IWDS every night, apparently about 2 a.m. And if you are, if you make an update in IWDS, but you wanna see that change in Illinois WorkNet right away, you just click the sync with IWDS button. Uh, we did have a question I about like a comment. Sorry, Natasha. Mm -hmm. um, when you're sending, say you have an issue, you see something going on, and you want to ask for help regarding a, a client, please make sure you're putting their WorkNet ID or username. Don't put their name and social security um, when you're sending that. So we'll be able to look up the client um, by the username. I'm, I'm sorry, by the user ID. Just want to know that. And then um, if you have someone that needs to have their password reset, you can easily do that. You could send messages, um, but if you're going to do that, we just prefer to use the case note, but if that is an option that's available. Uh, we always try, we're trying to be, I'm trying to be really good about putting uh, related instructions right here. So if you have questions about the overview page, then you'll have the related instructions right here. So you don't, they're available in the Gut Partner Guide, but they should be available here as well. Um, as we go through the intake form, you can see uh, and print the information from the intake form. And real quick, let me hit the button before I didn't really want to yet. So if you needed to update this information, you could go to edit the section, it'll take you to that area, and then you can return back to the intake form. Then we have the intake review. And so how we uh, made these, uh, these updates um, for this round is that each of these sections should look really familiar. So this section right here, is the same section that is presented on the overview page. Um, what we wanted to do is make sure you knew what the action items and trying to be clear about you know, what type of stuff needs to be completed on this page up front so it's easily um, visible. So you can see that we need to complete the suitability area. So that would just be more about you know, looking at the employment goals. You can click edit, edit that information. Again, same with, you know, how long you want to stay in uh, training, how far can you travel, if you want to update that information, <clears throat> you could do that as well. You'll see that we have a training, a recommended training program. If the training program is not recommended, then it would be in the non-recommended program. And it's not to say that that person can't go into that program. What it's saying is that um, we need to have a discussion about why, um, about that training program, you know, about why this may, hold on, about why it may not be uh, recommended. And you can click on the training program link and it's gonna provide you the training program details. And so this could be, you know, the different things that you might wanna discuss about, you know, maybe travel or maybe it has to do with they don't have a valid driver's license, something like that. If they would like to be in the program, then you check the program, you can see who it was recommended by in the information bubble. You can indicate that the program was selected <coughs> if they decline to participate or for whatever reason they don't meet program requirements. Maybe they um, are unable to get a valid driver's license. And so since that would be a, a program requirement, then they may not be able to participate. You can submit that information and you can see um, uh, you know, who, who made that recommendation. The next part of it is eligibility. And so um, if the person is a male over 18, 
it's going to say, are you registered with Selective Service? You can, if it says no, you have a link to register with Selective Service. If you say yes, it's going to have you put the Selective Service number in the system. And then um, these are the different pieces and parts eligibility uh, pieces that they said that, you know, I'm a, that's what they said in their uh, intake form. In this case, I dropped out of high school. If you need to know what type of documentation is required for that particular line item, you hit show and you can see the documentation sources allowed. You can see different references to um, policy or other uh, area, uh, you know, the glossary, other things that may be helpful to you. Other considerations. It's kind of like your little cheat sheet. Um, so you can go, you can um, make sure you collect the information. And then if you are going to be doing, well, regardless, if once you have the documentation collected, you indicate that the documentation is collected and you're going to submit it to IWDS or you collected the documentation but you're not able to serve them right now so in a way it kind of puts them in like a like a wait list or you're not able to collect the eligibility documentation either way you look at it the only way that this um, intake information gets into IWDS for this program is if you and indicate that you collected the eligibility documentation and you're submitting the application to IWDS. You submit that information and it'll document when the information was sent to IWDS. If you are the person that is going to be certifying that application to IWDS, you don't really need to set up an appointment with a career planner. Um, if you are using the process where you're scheduling an appointment with an OEA career planner, just indicate that you're you're doing so and use the scheduling tool to uh, pick a time to um, for that customer to to meet with a career planner so that they can get their IWDS application certified and then you just submit the information Do you have any questions on this area so far Okay, I'm gonna move forward, but feel free to type in questions as you have them. Then we have the career plan. And the career plan is set up, so we have the overview page, we have related instructions available here, and it's set up as a process. So, um, you know, goals and the steps are really supposed to be based on assessments, and so, uh, we have an area that brings in the different assessment results that we've collected through, you know, so far into the system up to this point. So you can look at each of these areas. If you have your own assessments, um, we definitely welcome you to enter those. So you can add assessment results. Maybe it's an other assessment. Aptitudes. You know, maybe you can you can pick some of the stuff that's already been entered in here or you can enter in your own and enter in those assessment results into the system and then they're saved there and then what we have is an assessment summary so you click add assessment summary you pick what area um, maybe it's readiness training employment so maybe it's just employment Say, you know, what are my strengths? What will I do to improve? What will my case manager do to support me? What will my career advisor, career coach do to support me? What will my family do to support me? And what are some other support needs? So you have to do one of these, um, but you don't have to do all of them. We do recommend, you know, going through this process and like, you know, really, I, you know, using it as a conversation to, identify what you already have to help, you know, keep them motivated and so forth, but also to identify what other supports are needed. So you can save those changes. 
and all of your assessment summaries will be saved in the summary section. And if you need to edit it, you can edit those. Okay, so once you've done your assessments and you're talking about the with to the person um, with their goals, um, you can enter in the goal statement. Is it a support service, employment, education, training, or independent living? What category does it fall into? Short term, long term, and what's it, what's the status? So initially, you're going to start out with something that's um, not started. I know it's not really goal, but for time's sake. And then once you have your goals, then you can click Add, and it's going to send you over to the Build a Plan. And so you can look at system generated. Um, service recommendations and all of these services that are in here have been aligned to IWDS services. So if you wanted something with, you know, uh, let's see here. Job. We'll do a staff assisted explore jobs and careers. All right. So I did that or I could have filtered Staff assisted the training. And then we'll add this one as well. Okay. So once you've added these different services, you can edit them. Each one will have to be associated with a goal. And you can see the different types of um, which ones are required. So goal, start date, due date, weekly hours, status. So right now we would just say that it's not started. And you can say if it's WIOA funded. And you can identify the different barriers that this one would address. Okay. And you can update the information. You can identify a service provider. So it's going to, we have either your information in here or if there's a service provider that's a, a different service provider that's associated you know, with your uh, information or you can choose other and enter you know, whoever um, the provider is. I'm just gonna do this for right now just to save time. You can also add the credentials. So the credentials come from what you have entered into your training program. And so you can choose forklift driver. You could choose the other credential that I have in there, or this is not a training program credential. So if you wanted to put these in here, you could do this. Of course, this is assuming that you're going to come back in and update this information. Um, after the person has earned the credential as opposed to a planned credential. It's at this point in time, um, right with with a system light set up is that we're pulling in credentials from IWDS. So it's not necessary to, I guess, go in here and, and pick this since we are pulling in the information from IWDS and I've I don't think it's necessary to uh, duplicate that, that that work, but just know that these are the different components that are available within the career plan. Okay. So once I start building out this area, you'll see that um, you can see that it's associated with a goal. You can see that it's a has a barrier or challenge that's identified and associated with it, you'll be able to see which ones are already synced to IWDS, which ones, if you're having somebody else um, input the information into IWDS, who, which ones have sent uh, a request to be updated. So as you update all this information, it will populate the overview page 
and you'll see that in the career plan you can see the goal and you can see the related steps under each goal and you can see the start end dates and you can see the overall status so once this changes to uh, started and the reason why it would change to started if it's a, a, a WIOA funded um, step is that this that would mean that the service was entered into IWDS and it was synced up with this step. Once it's marked as started, this will automatically, the, the goal status will automatically update to started. So then your question, I'm assuming, would be, okay, well that's fine and dandy, but how do I get the IWDS services to sync with LMI WorkNet? And so what we did was we have this export IWDS crosswalk. And so when you open, uh, click that button, then it's going to export the list of um, steps that's associated with this person, okay? They'll have their goal, the steps, but more importantly, what it's gonna be for you whenever you're entering information into IWDS, is this gonna say, okay, you need to have this vo uh, vocational exploration, youth service, and you need to make sure that the planned start date is the same start date. So if you have the person, the service, and the same start date, it's going to be able to recognize that in LMI WorkNet, and it will automatically update this to say started and any of the changes that you make to that service and IWDS will go ahead and it will update the information that's in this career plan. Any questions or anything else you want me to cover on that Tara or Tammy? Tara or Tammy, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Okay. Well, I can't hear anybody. Oh, the phone dropped, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, you can also, for these, this area in the career plan, is you can add case notes, you know, specifically about the career plan. You can make it as general. It's the same basic tool that we use everywhere for our case notes. If you want to send it as a message, you can send it, you can just have it as a case note, or you can send it as a message in an email, and you can send it to the customer, or you can send it to other partners. Um, and as you add those case notes, then each of those case notes will be saved in this area. Some of the questions that people have had is, well, I have a typo in my case note. Can, can, you, can we change it? Um, yes, technically we can. <laughs> but the problem is that whenever we do case notes, they are sent to IWDS and we don't have the ability to update existing case notes in IWDS, we just pass them to IWDS. So if you have a typo or something like that, then um, just go ahead and put another case note that says, you know, correction to, you know, whatever it was. And um, the, an exception would be is maybe, you know, you meant to, um, type in Natasha's case notes, but you were in Tara's account. So if that's the case, you know, by all means, let us know and we can work with IWDS to have um, those case notes updated or removed if it's not really, you know, for, uh, you know, if it's somebody else's case notes, it just entered into the wrong person. I'm back, Natasha. Okay. Did you have anything more about um, oh, one other thing I 
didn't talk about is the print customer copy. Uh, once you have completed the career plan, you can print the copy and have it signed. And we recommend just you know doing that and then um, having it put into what did I just do on that introduction? Um, and then you can put that into uh, their um, file. Can't remember who I was signed in. This maybe this person. Um, go ahead and with the career plan, like I said, you know, you can print a customer copy, you can sign it, they can sign it. And then um, I would just say that, you know, change the status to customer agreement uploaded and on file. And if, you know, you want to upload it into the system, you can do that in the upload section or, um, you know, at a minimum, you need to have it in their, in their file. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let everyone know, so I went in and updated everyone's grant detail page right now. So when you go in and add your information today, please double check that. If there's anything that you see that, hey, our grant number is wrong or the amount on our grant is wrong, please let me know. Um, but everybody should be updated at this point. And I do want to go around um, if people can either chat or unmute your phones. I want to check your grant numbers really quickly with you. So Asian Human Services, how many people do you have in your program? Um, I think we have like seven enrolled, but we have five in class. Uh, is it five or seven? What's 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 going on with the other two? Uh, one deferred and wanted to wait until this upcoming class to start, and uh, one we just got him certified, so we're just waiting for a class to start. So you have six people that are going to do it this time around, right? Uh, I think so. Maybe five. Okay, but how many people have you certified in the system? How many people have? Seven. Okay, there we go. All right, BCS. Hey, Tara, it's Amanda. Hey. Um, we have, and I'm not sure, are we still listed as South and West or are we combined? It's this just time combined. Of, the last okay. number I have for you guys is 23. Uh, yes, that's what I got from Eddie. So we have 23. Um, I believe they're all certified at this point. I don't think they all have services entered yet though. Okay. Can so we are working on getting that taken care of. Okay. And every, just so everybody knows, only give me the certified number and then also don't forget your first service for all your clients should be your ISS, which, um, which is completed because you're going to print a cu customer copy. Uh, Erie. Okay. Uh, Metropolitan. Yes, we have uh, seven that are certified and 12 more to go. Okay, so you have seven certified and then 12 additional? Yes. Okay. OAI? Hi, good morning. Um, we do have 14 certified in Iwoods. Okay. And then Peoria Public Schools? And then skills, I see you at a total of nine, or a total, uh, okay, so skill, or OAI, you have 14, oh, in school, because you have in school and out of school, that's good to note, okay. Um, and then skills, we have nine enrolled, two certified, seven, which will be complete by Thursday, okay, so nine total, two and seven. Okay, so in the system, so for the people that say these people are enrolled and certified, when you look in Illinois WorkNet, you should see those clients. Natasha, can we look and see just to make sure that those numbers are coming over? Because this is what we need to make sure in the beginning, guys. It's really critical that when you're certifying clients and putting those services in that you see your numbers increase in Illinois WorkNet as well, because this is where we're getting the information for our management team. And Patty, if you're on, can you please put your number in the chat box?
So this is where we're getting the reports from. So right now it looks like we have Asian Human Services at seven, BCS you're showing one. So we need to get those other, what did you guys have, 23? So the other 22 people are not in the system. Erie is showing zero. Metropolitan, you're showing zero. And you guys said you have seven and then 12 waiting. But that number not change until we give them a service? Yeah, first, so when you enroll your students and certify their application, your mm -hmm. first service is your ISS, right? That you've completed right. with them. So that right. should be the first service for every client. So as you're certifying them, you should already. Yeah, I'm looking at this. I was going to say, that says 70, my Lord. Did it say 70? <laughs> yeah, eight people. I'm just double checking. No, yeah. So this is what we are going to do. Um, and then skills, it looks like you guys are at zero. Peoria Public Schools, it looks like you're at one. So this is where you guys, and this is under the reports tab, and it's called Julio Report, Julio Management Report. This is where you need to be looking as well to make sure your numbers are correct. So as you see from what you guys said and what the system is showing, it's different. So we got to make sure these numbers are being updated. Also, if you look at the top and see that your projected number is incorrect for your organization, um, like skills, I'm sure yours is wrong because you're supposed to be at 45. Peoria's is right, OAI's is right, Metro 40, Erie 25, BCS 48. Okay, so just skills, go into your training programs tab and just update your number from 60 to 45. And that's where you put in all your training programs and things like that. That's where that number is coming from, directly from what you guys put in. So go ahead and complete that so that 60 is down to 45. Make sure that your target audience, if it's out of school, in school, make sure that's correct. And then the actual target um, pathway. So make sure that's correct for your agencies as well. Um, so for everybody that says they have people in, make sure that your clients are certified in the system. You have all your um, tape tests and everything entered, but also that their ISS is the first service. And then you should be looking in this system to make sure these numbers are updating. If for whatever reason your numbers are not updating in this system, you need to send us an email immediately. It helps if you send some screenshots to say, hey, this is what I have. Um, but we got to make sure these numbers are, are getting over you know, while, while we have just a couple students and not when it's 100 people. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Give everybody maybe a minute. You can talk, you can type it, whatever's easier for you guys. Okay, so like I said, make sure we're doing the grantee um, detail page and then make sure that the clients that you actually have in the system is actually transferring over. Anybody have any other questions, any other topics for? Um... I think um, some of these people, I think that we went ahead and connected some of the people. If you're in a situation where you're, um, you just happen to have had your customer in IWDS first and you didn't go through I, I have a feeling that there's at least one customer in here that was in IWDS and then we helped you connect them you know they maybe they filled out the intake form and then we connected them after the fact um, so I kind of like went backwards through the system um, and that would take, you know, like Cody or somebody like making that connection for you. Um, and make sure you go back and complete the other steps because otherwise it's going to throw all the numbers off. Like I think this person with BCS needs to go back. Well, I think I know need to go back through and complete the steps for the in suitability and eligibility. Otherwise, it's gonna throw off all your dashboard numbers. And just to piggyback on what Natasha was saying, you guys should be starting in Illinois WorkNet and completing the applications, completing the suitability, recommending them for the program. 
and doing those steps, it helps to alleviate these issues. If you don't follow the, the process, then your dashboard, the dashboard numbers and this report aren't necessarily going to match up. Because the dashboard goes through and let me get to it. There's like a, you know, there's a process because it's supposed to show kind of where people are in the system. And if they don't meet the criteria of one of the areas, they're not going to move down to the next area. You know what I mean? So the intake only includes people that are, have completed the intake form and would like to participate. These only includes people who have a selected program. These are the ones that were submitted to IWDS, you know, so we try to make sure, you know, we always tell you, you know, it's only includes this. And if it doesn't, if that doesn't meet that criteria, they're not going to filter down to the other sections because you know, we're trying to show here that this is a process and where they are in the process. Um, whereas, you know, we use this report, you know, and say, you know, look at, we want to see people that have enrolled services. But if you look at this number, it's not matching up to the dashboard and it should. And if it doesn't match the dashboard, it means that there's probably something that's been missed earlier in the process. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, please call us, email us. Um, if you're having issues so that we can um, address them immediately. We just wanna make sure we're starting these grants out on the right foot and that people are following the right process um, so that we don't have this crazy data issue in the beginning. So if you're having any issues, please email us immediately. Make sure you're attaching me and Tammy to um, all emails so that we kind of know what's going on. If you have an issue with Illinois WorkNet, please attach Natasha. If it's IWDS, please attach Jim Potts. Um, and then just let us, just keep us updated. All right. All right. We will see everybody next week. If no one has any questions, comments. Um, Patty, were you able to join us? And then Sarah? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.